Hey everyone, good two years after NVIDIA released the 1050 card, they recently now released the GTX 1650. Uh, this particular one is from EVGA, uh, newest release. I believe also the 1660 Ti was released at the same time. This card is currently running for about 150 and beyond, considering uh, if you get an overclocked version or not. This one's a single fan version. I believe some brands do actually have two fans on it. And uh, it does support Turing, just like the 2060 I reviewed in another video. Some uh, little specs here for you. They say this card is a good 50% faster than the previous generation video card. Uh, I guess we'll uh, definitely go ahead and check it out. Let me go ahead and open this box up here. Put this camera down. Nothing too special. Opening up these uh, video cards is not like they have toys or anything in them. Just uh, a lot of bubble wrap, uh, anti-static bag for the video card. Um, you know, a little installation guide, which, you know, you can definitely look at. It's probably got warranty information and gazillion languages. Kind of looking forward to seeing how this card goes. Now, I actually was under the impression when I first heard about this card, you know, back when there was just a rumor, and then, of course, some more things came out for it. I was under the impression this card would be just like the 1050 and even the 950 card and not have any power connectors, but it turns out this particular mod does have a six pin power connector. Now I know there's a brand out there that does have a 1650 card that does not require one. So it, you know, I'm pretty sure this particular model card by EVGA is a slightly overclock one. So that just may explain why, um, well, maybe I shouldn't put it on that. You can also see here, no DVI connection here, which is a slight bummer, but um, I know a lot of people probably don't use it anymore, but I'm one of those people that actually still use DVI, including that model right behind you, is using currently a DVI cable as well. So here we are, they're using three slots. Looking forward to seeing how this card goes. Like I said, you know, slight bummer that it does use a uh, power connector, but I guess we'll see how it goes with the numbers. Hello? Anybody here? Hello? Are you okay? Wait here. I'll check it out. Excuse me, is everything okay? Stay back, man. I got this. Come any closer.
won't shoot. Get down. really does remind you of Paris, though accepting the smell of overflown sewage. Wonderful memories are coming back to me of that city. You might be 
not really audible at all. So definitely a pretty quiet card. Here's a card again outside of the computer now. I'm gonna probably put it into another machine, see what numbers I get on that particular Intel-based machine. Um, mentioned earlier again, I, I did put this uh, video card into a Ryzen computer, one you've actually seen in other videos as well too. So personal thoughts on that. I honestly really thought I was gonna see a little bit better numbers, uh, matching it up to the 570 from AMD which uh, I believe uh, is currently outperforming this card in many, if not most, um, cases and uh, in terms of uh, benchmarking and whatnot. But at this particular price point, I actually really was expecting a little bit more uh, performance, but um, it did perform pretty decently well. Um, you did see it struggle quite a bit in Resident Evil 2, um, one of the newest games I actually benchmarked it on. And even that Jurassic World um, evolution. Though I do have to make one little point. Um, when I was doing a recording, the frames dropped a good 15 to 20. So got to give it a little bit more credit there than the numbers actually showed. But the other games were actually pretty accurate. Maybe a one or two or three um, frame per second um, difference when I'm recording or not recording. So... I personally don't believe I may be picking up another one of these cards. I'm really happy I was able to benchmark it though. But considering the performance and also the cost I've heard of the 50, 570 is actually a good 30 or, 30 or $40 cheaper depending again which um, model uh, GTX 1650 you got because I know some of these are actually running overclock prices maybe like 160 170 and um, it does make a difference. Uh, I believe this card does run a little cooler and a little uh, more power efficient. But um, if that doesn't bother you too much, maybe a little difference of 50 or 60 watts in power or possibly a little less. Um, one of the cards, on, you know, in this case, the winner over the NVIDIA card. Still, you know, this card actually did run really quiet, really cool. Uh, I actually didn't really hear the fan go crazy or anything. The fan was spinning all the time, so I was actually... Uh, I was expecting the cart, the fan to just be running passive, like um, some other older generation video cards, but no, not in this case. The cart, the fan's actually running pretty much all the time. So it's really totally your call. Uh, I act, this card still got some good power in it. Uh, maybe I'll do a little benchmarking of some older games and see what numbers come up there. But uh, in current games, like I said, even Resident Evil Two was just struggling quite a bit, even at running that not the highest settings. Other games that were high settings and uh, running for the most part pretty much okay. So there you have it. Uh, my personal thought, neither for or against, but um, some people are clearly in their benchmarking uh, information, whatnot, and reviews are definitely giving this card a very, very mixed review. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found that helpful. Any comments or questions, go ahead and Toss them over. Shoot a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe. Hit the little button in the lower right corner. I'll definitely be shooting up some more videos and uh, reviews and trial videos and whatnot. I really hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. Thanks again. Take care.